I love canvas backs. I grew up on the Chesapeake Bay and canvas backs were, were the king of ducks even though they were not terribly abundant when I was a kid. But, but uh, um, canvas backs typically come to the prairies and they go to the northern part of the prairies. The transition between the grassland in, in the prairie pothole region and the forest, the vast forested northern part of Canada there's a transition zone maybe a hundred miles wide that's called parkland and it's where you get a mix of grass and trees and that's what canvasbacks really like it's not that they like the trees what they like is the is the more stable wetlands in the parklands so the Minnedosa pothole region uh, in southwestern Manitoba is good parkland habitat and has great canvasback densities there so uh, one of the places canvasbacks really like to breed there in, in uh, southwestern Manitoba. They tend to be an early nesting species. Uh, for those of you who have seen a Delta logo, you'll recognize that canvasbacks are, are the centerpiece of our Delta logo. Um, and one of the other cool things about canvasbacks is they're kind of like Canada geese in that they show incredible philopatry. Philopatry is just jargon, a fancy term for homing. And lots of ducks show homing, but canvasbacks are, are really, of the prairie nesting ducks, they're the one that show the greatest philopatry. So they almost always come right back to where they were either hatched or nested in years past. Now, one of the downsides of that is that if you hunt a canvasback, a breeding canvasback population, you can do what Al Hopebaum referred to as burnout. You can actually shoot so many of the local canvasbacks that you you extirpate the population, you, you destroy the local population. Well, because they all go back to where they were hatched or nested the prior year, you're not going to get any canvasbacks returning. So we've had to reestablish canvasbacks in some places uh, by basically transporting the young into the area. But, but uh, but that philopatry is important for a duck where you have predictable wetlands so they can come back and they know the area and they know the wetlands and where the good food resources are. Um, they tend to be an early nesting species and, and like redheads, they nest over water. So they build their nest in, in thick clumps of cattail. And like most ducks, they don't carry nest material. So they just find a thick batch of cattail, fold it down, they have to keep their eggs out of the water, but uh, they just fold the cattail in and, and build a platform right above the water and it's concealed overhead so crows can't see the nest and, and uh, it holds the eggs up above the water. Now, if we get a really wet spring and the water comes up, these canvasbacks will reach out and they'll keep building their nest up. So sometimes you find a, an overwater canvasback nest that's been built up six or eight inches. It's really interesting. But the problem with that is that they have to use so much of the vegetation that then the nest is very obvious from above. But it's better than having the eggs sink and, and be submerged and, and die. So, so you'll get some canvasback nests in really wet years that are very open because they've used so much of the vegetation within reach of the hen to build up the nest platform. Neat ducks, overwater nesters, often parasitized by redheads.